It'd be good to be on the screen. How we doing, traders? Welcome to the SPACs Attack, where we talk everything SPACs. And if you are excited about some SPACs, let me know by giving me a like right there, guys. I want to see these likes pushing up. We have a great show for you today, guys. Another interview, guys. If you guys don't get information from SPACs Attack, I just don't know what you're doing. But let me bring on my man, the brains to this show. My man. You guys, give him a shout out. Chris Ketchum. What's going on, Mitch? What's going on? What's up, man? It's good to be with you, man. Uh, always good to be on SPACs Attack. So definitely, guys, do us a favor. Smash the like button. Support us. Hit the share button. Let everyone know. We got Airspan on later today, guys. So you don't want to be missing out. 5G play. I mean, I know a lot of people took their eyes off 5G with the whole pandemic. But at the end of the day, 5G is coming. It's just a matter of time. The question is, we'll find out how good this company is when we get to the interview a little bit later. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get into our headlines. There's a lot to talk about, guys, so I want to get into that. Chris, go ahead. Oh, looks looks like I got my man Spencer Rad Raskoff on, on, on CNBC. CNBC. Uh, I could put him up right now. Do you want to start with that? Yeah, so guys, we did have a deal announcement today. SPNV is the ticker. This one was announced a little late. It was 9 a.m. today, so Spencer Raskoff, former founder of Zillow, um, you know, taking a online real estate play public here. So it looks like he's talking on CNBC right now, Mitch. Yeah, let's bring him on. Let's bring him on. Let's hear what we hear here. Um, let me just put the audio up here. Let me know that the audio is okay in the chat, guys. If you press a button on your smartphone and have magic happen, I think those are going to be long-term winners and, and they'll make it through this, this choppy period as, as we see a, a risk-off trade and uh, money cycles a little bit out of growth and a little bit more into value. Well, yeah, and we will talk more about All right, so Chris, we can talk on the background here. As you guys know, this was the ex-CEO of, of Zillow. You are exposed to real estate. So, so many going to be interesting to hear now. kind of questions he gets. impacting consumer, consumer behavior when it comes to, to moving and buying new houses? Well, mortgage rates have been so low for so long, and that uh, that has definitely buoyed the real estate market. But the, the research that, that my team and I have done shows that as rates as mortgage rates tick up, it doesn't really crush the housing market. It just causes people to trade down to a slightly lower price point. The housing market right now is on very stable footing with extremely low levels of inventory. A lot of markets have just a couple of weeks of inventory. And in a normal market, you'd expect a couple months of inventory. So even as mortgage rates start to tick up, they're still at historic lows. I think the real estate market is going to do just fine. What you are starting to see, though, quite a bit of it's going people to be reassess where they choose to live. Hey. Companies are shifting to a more permanent, yep. a hybrid work from home type environment where you're not tethered to your company headquarters anymore. Yep, there we go. The, the yeah. studio that Pointing you have it out. Now in, in your own home. I, I mean, mean look at us. To, to a, a, We're at home, right, right Chris? From home. It, it does change the real estate market. I know that's something I've looked at is, you know, no longer it. having to worry about, you know, necessarily that. what your commute maybe time is. So it opens up the door. Talk for about other about opportunities, and other and you know, market prices the way and ranges. I understand the model and correct me where I'm wrong here. Part of what you're doing is offering cash for homes in OfferPad and then expecting to, to resell. It seems that as hmm. interest rates rise, if more homes come onto the market, uh, the end consumer, the home seller, is going to be more likely to want to use a service like that. But then there's more risk that goes on to that model and your data has got to be really good about which homes you buy and well, how long you expect to have I, to hold I, on. Uh, Raskoff, I wouldn't mobile. test them on data. What OfferPad is doing is <laughs> it is part of this digital revolution that we see throughout the whole economy. So you think about your, digital your transition, Rana, Uber, Instacart, Postmates, TaskRabbit, all these services where you press a button and some stress is alleviated in your life. OfferPad is part of that trend. So 99.5% of people still sell their home the old way. The old way where a real estate agent walks around your house, points to all the things that you need to fix about your house before you can sell it. Things that you didn't care enough to fix when you own the home and now you're being told to fix it for the next owner. And then you list your home and you have no idea how long it'll take to sell. It's a very stressful and expensive way of selling. And that's how 99.5% of people do. Uh, what OfferPad provides is speed and certainty. So you can either sell your home directly to them or you can list it with them. And if in 60 days you don't get the price you want, there's a backup offer from OfferPad that they'll pay to buy your home. Then they ready the home 
for refurbishment, just like a car dealer would take a used car and turn it into a certified pre-owned car before reselling it. That's, That's a nice smart. analogy there, uh, the used I car. Think, I, I like that analogy, and I think that works well to explain to this model and kind of what Open Door is doing too, to right? They're, they're buying their real estate yeah. from homeowners. You know, oh, they're they're taking on some so of the risk uh, to be able to resell that, but they're able to use their own logistics to refurbish it. They have a large partner network of, you know, contractors. They can, you know, improve the house and then they the resell it to home. make the profit. Uh, do you see that so, you know, that, that pre-owned yeah. well, certified used is, car analogy, I think is key there. Like offer pad is the fact that they're doing huge numbers of renovations at scale. They've done 15,000 renovations across 30,000 transactions for $7 okay. billion dollars of total real estate value. So looking like more focused down. on the so renovations the here. The consumer should, uh, should repaint your house before you list it. It is crazy. Instead, it's, it's going to be an interesting so housing market. You know, that's one thing I definitely have seen. Of so it looks community. like you they can get like an offer almost immediately or you and can go to the process of actually selling your home. So Spencer, give us a sense of why OfferPad is doing this via SPAC rather than going public via traditional IPO and what your outlook is on the SPAC landscape now as it gets even more crowded. It seems like every day as more, more SPACs are launched. Yeah, there are a lot of SPACs. Frankly, there are too many SPACs, but there are not too many good SPACs. You said SPACs. it. You said and, it. And I think today's announcement is a good example of this, where Perfect. A, a good SPAC group like like mine, that Supernova, can provide a SPAC there you go. The guy. to the public Speak market. the truth. Speak so the truth, what, Spencer. The reason OfferPad chose this, uh, this path of partnering with Supernova is because we can help uh, onboard them. In this what's with that animal? <laughs> We've spent the last couple of weeks educating investors about the company onboarding a couple hundred million dollars of investment from the capital markets. All right. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and pull that off there. It doesn't look like there's too much more. He's he's getting more hammered now by CNBC about SPACs, but you yeah, know how CNBC likes to do that. SPACs, yep. you, you guys have heard it. I'm sure you guys have heard it on CNBC, the, the knocking of SPACs. So they started giving him those questions. The ones we try to avoid to give the CEOs, because why? What does that gain? You nothing know, but be he, negative. Yeah, nothing but just being negative towards him about his investment versus talking about the company, what we try to focus on here on Benzinga. All right, so I'll let you get into those headlines. I wanted to talk about that one. You guys know me. I've been in this one for months, months, months. This is my favorite management team. I've 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 read articles about how they selected it. It definitely was my favorite. I'm still in this one, guys. I'm still in this one and, and I loaded up the boat. And we'll see what happens. But Chris, take us to some headlines. What else we got here? All right. Yeah, perfect, guys. We're going to dive into that deal in a minute. But up first, we've got some notable headlines. Not too much going on out there. And as I said, we did get that deal announcement at 9 a.m. today rather than, you know, earlier in the morning. So up first, we have RPLA. This is Replay. Uh, merging with Finance of America, we, of course, had CEO Patty Cook on SPAC's attack two times over the last couple months. She did appear on Mad Money last night, so RPLA did get a bump up in the after-hours market. Um, keep an eye out on this one, you know, again, in the mortgage and different loan offering, you know, marketplaces. Very diversified, you know, unlike some of their competitors that are peer plays on the mortgage industry. So, if you want to learn more, go back, find that interview we did with Patty Cook. Um, you know, definitely worth checking out their ticker RPLA. Yeah, before you move on to the next one, I do want to add here, Kramer kept saying in his interview that this was the unknown one, that nobody was covering it. And guess what, Kramer? You are wrong. We yeah. didn't have this one here, guys. I guess Kramer's We've not watching our show it. after all. I thought he was watching, but hey, I guess, I guess I, he's too I, busy for us. Hey, but I will mention one thing he did say. He said that it was crazy for this stock to be at the price that it was. So uh, yeah, I'll mention that. Yeah, this around $10 for a long time. So looks like we're around, you know, ten fifty last I checked. So keep an eye out on this one. They do have that merger vote coming up. Um, you know, so another great interview with Patty Cook. And if you guys have been watching the show, you should already know that name. Another interview that we did not too long ago was HOFV, Hall of Fame Entertainment. 
Um, so the stock moved in after hours last night and is up today. Um, I'm seeing out there on Twitter circulating that the company could be a player in the NFT market with that relationship with the NFL. Um, you know, I have to say that at this point, that is just speculation. Um, you know, their HOFV was not mentioned in the press release where the NFL talked about, you know, exploring NFT options and HOFV does not have any NFT experience. So take that rumor with a grain of salt. Um, you know, for me, HOFV, I think the story is later this year when they have that Hall of Fame induction ceremony and, you know, we start getting live games, um, you know, played with fans there at um, Canton, Ohio. So keep an eye out on HOFV, though, um, you know, if it dips back down. Then we have to talk about RIDE, R-I-D-E, Lordstown Motors. Full disclosure, I do still own a position. Um, they announced last night their earnings, but of course, pre-revenue, so not a lot there. They also uh, announced that they did receive an SEC inquiry um, after that short report was filed against the company. And then uh, Steve Burns appearing on CNBC today. Not, not a great um, interview, in my opinion, you know, talking about the comparison of actual orders um, versus, you know, uh, letters of intent. Um, so saying uh, that... Um, I don't think anybody thought we had actual orders is one of the quotes that he said during that interview, uh, said that the company has always made it clear they collected non-binding letters of intent, um, but referred to them as pre-orders in the real world. They always classified them for that, and they have a lot of those pre-orders. Um, you know, so we've talked on the show, they do have some existing fleet deals from some companies, um, you know, for that new electric pickup truck. Um, but this one got hit hard by that, that short report. And then also the news that Workhorse was not getting the USPS deal. So kind of a, a double negative right at the same time, really hit these shares. Um, you know, so this is one, you know, you're really going to have to either, you know, probably hold for the long term or pay attention to buying opportunities if you want to get into this one, because, you know, that interview and that SEC inquiry, you know, could make this, you know, uh, uh, keep dipping lower. So keep an eye out on RIDE here. And then we have VLDR, Velodyne LIDAR. They announced that the former NTSB chair, Deborah Hersman, is joining the board of directors. She brings 30 years of leadership in the transportation and safety industries. That's a pretty notable hot hire for, uh, you know, a LIDAR company looking to attack that auto industry. So keep an eye out on that one. And then we turn to our deal. So SPNV, Supernova, you just heard from Spencer Raskov, the founder of Zillow um, on CNBC. So OfferPad is a leading tech enabled real So that leading digital platform, iBuying empowers homeowners the, the solution to streamline the home selling experience. Uh, the deal values the company at $3 billion uh, post-transaction equity value, going to provide that cash to help them expand. Uh, BlackRock included in the pipe and also home builder Taylor, Taylor Morrison Home. So here you have the founder of Zillow and you have a uh, home builder Taylor Morrison, both getting involved in this you know digital uh, buying of homes company, which I think is pretty attractive there to me. Um, so they expect to generate revenue of $1.4 billion in 2021. And as you heard Mitch say, they can request a free 24 hour cash offer online, less than three minutes, um, or they can go through you know, the sale process and there are other options. So right now, online penetration of real estate is low, less than 1% in that $1.6 trillion addressable market. So OfferPad is one of several companies, you know, really looking to expand um, in that TAM. So they said right now uh, they raised less capital than competitors and that they operate in 900 plus cities and towns across the country and plan to expand nationwide. So we've talked a lot about Open Door, O-P-E-N, the Chamas Fact, um, you know, similar process. They are in less cities, though, if I remember right, Open Door. Um, so here you have, you know, OfferPad, you know, looking to expand nationally. They get this SPAC deal, 
you know, investors not, um, you know, really buying into this deal yet. But, you know, I know you own this one, Mitch. I'm excited about this one. I'm looking to buy, you know, with today's dip, um, you know, at the 1050 or below range. So, so what are your thoughts, uh, you know, quick before we get to that interview, Mitch, on this uh, deal? Well, one thing that I have been mentioning, and this doesn't have to do with SPNV, but just more along what they're in, is I've been mentioning about the housing. And I've been talking about this for a while, guys. So one of the things that I noticed is that the, the housing boom has started. I mean, you look at housing prices compared to last year, you can see sometimes 10, 20 percent the value of the house. I mean, gaining 20 percent of value on your house in one year, that's called a housing boom. And so I think that's what this company is really trying to take advantage of here is that they're going to they're going to take advantage of, of of a housing boom. You know, and with that housing boom, it could get big. Um, so I'm in this one, guys. I've added. I still have orders to add more. So uh, I'm going to stick tight in this one. SPMV. Uh, I love the management team. Love Raskov. I mean, you're talking to a C, uh, the ex CEO of Zillow, and then he's going to get into another housing play. Yeah, I'll stick with him, and I'll, I'll stick with him as a CEO. Um, sometimes you can buy a CEO and I feel like this is the same kind of deal. Um, so I'm going to stick tight in this one and that's SPNV. Yeah. And Mitch, All right, you know, guys. Real quick, I know, I know you and I talked to, you know, before we started the show, ARC funds, Kathy Wood, we have to at least mention here, open mm -hmm. door is a top 10 holding in several ARC ETFs. It's one of the few SPACs that she owns in more than one ETF. She she loves open door technologies. She's talked very vocally about that. And she also used to have large position in Zillow. So she has experience with Zillow, knows Raskov. And then you have Loop Ventures, Gene Munster, who's been you know a frequent guest on pre-market prep, really diving in and talking about how Zillow and Open Door are going to transform that industry. I, I think you're gonna see a lot of attention from some of the bigger names talking about this industry and this company. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if Kathy Wood took a position, you know, either today or tomorrow, and we'll kind of play that from here. So, you know, again, not a for sure thing, but keep an eye out for that ad. All right. So let's go ahead and let's get into our interview. But before then, I did want to mention that keep a lookout. You never know. The Biden tax, the first time buyers comes out, that could even push this even further. Um, I think there's a, a definitely a supply of homes that want to be purchased. The new homes are not coming out right now. The lumber is too expensive, guys. They're canceling contracts on new homes, and they're looking at the old supply. So I think that old supply still gets the, the house booming. All right, let's go ahead and let's get into our interview. This is when we go ahead and unlock SPACs, guys. So definitely, I'm going to go ahead and play this video, and then we'll bring on our guest. All right, guys, super excited again on SPAX Attack. Another exclusive CEO interview. So joining us today, we have Eric Stonestrom. He is the president and CEO of Airspan, a company going public with the SPAC New Beginnings Acquisition Corp. That's ticker NBA. Welcome to the show, Eric. Hello. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and have Chris do some questions and I'll be back with some of my own. Great. All right. Good morning to you, sir. Um, first question I have, you know, we, we talk about SPACs on this show. So uh, the question I have is, you know, with Airspan, why the decision to go public via SPAC um, instead of maybe a traditional IPO or a different route here? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. And we, we were uh, very excited about taking advantage of our growth to get in the public markets. Uh, we have a very good relationship with the NBA. The principals are, are just world class and, and outstanding and bring a lot of industry uh, synergy with the businesses that they've been in through their history. We like the size of the, of the SPAC very much in terms of uh, the right size to hit this market. And uh, so that was a, a lot of the inputs. And, and obviously the S4 filing process is, is more efficient than an S1. So. Those were some of the reasons we want to get out and, and take advantage of our growth and give public investors an opportunity to participate. Perfect. So 
Um, you joined Airspan back in 1998. You've served as the president and CEO for a while, a member of the board of directors. Can you give our viewers a little bit of history um, you know, on your relationship in the telecom industry prior to and with Airspan? Uh, yeah, so I, I started my career uh, right out of university at Bell Laboratories. Uh, th that was in a time when the U.S. was the preeminent uh, manufacturer of telecom equipment for most of the world. Uh, got a lot of excitement uh, and education along the way and, and got to start working in wireless uh, a little bit before we set up Airspan. We, we uh, then were able to leap in and, and do some very transformational stuff in the fixed wireless space. Uh, up through around 2012. At that point, we got uh, some really good tailwinds to move into 4G and into the much deeper market of uh, mobility. And that uh, has been a tremendous journey since. Uh, we pick up a significant experience from working with world-class operators like SoftBank, uh, Masayoshi San, very personally involved with, with what we're building and we've helped and sold them a lot of equipment. Similarly, India, Mukesh Ambani, Asia's uh, richest man has built a, a network from zero to 400 million subscribers. We've been a part of that journey. Uh, so it's been a great buildup to now bringing 5G uh, out to operators of all stripes and flavors around the world in the mobile side, but also fixed wireless returning to our roots as now fixed wireless and mobile converge and people just wanna be connected. Doesn't matter if they're out and about using a user device like a cell phone or they're in their premise or in their in their place of work. It's it's definitely a convergence play between mobility and fixed wireless. It's also a, a really exciting time as new operators enter the, the space. Rakuten is one of our bigger customers. We announced something yesterday. It's a greenfield build, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars to spend. Uh, similarly in the US, we're seeing uh, new networks being built, uh, both by cable MSOs who purchased Spectrum in the summer and also uh, some new market entrants. And then the private, Side. When I say private, I mean all that con connectivity that's needed in buildings and at airports and campuses, things like air to ground. We, we have a really significant intellectual property there and we're able to attack all three markets. The SPAC gives us an opportunity to, to grow even faster and go after all those markets with a vengeance. Perfect. So you mentioned SoftBank. Um, you know, one of the things that stood out to me in the investor presentation is you now have investors like SoftBank, as you mentioned, and then also Qualcomm and Dish Network, um, you know, and some other large names. What do these, you know, uh, large uh, partners mean? And, you know, how could that be viewed as a positive sign for potential investors in the SPAC? But, but th th it's been a great investor roster that we put together and we've added some names in this in the pipe process of the SPAC. It's a, it's a validation of our capabilities. It's a validation of why we're different. These these strategics, whether they're leading customers like SoftBank and Reliance Geo, suppliers like Qualcomm, who are very selective about how, who they work with, manufacturing partners like Foxconn who have scale, uh, all of them have seen in Airspan something really unique and really groundbreaking and innovative. And customers are seeing that as well. And so it's a very good uh, pedigree that says, this is a group that really gets things done and gets things done and breaks the mold to bring broadband and connectivity and 5G tools in a much more creative way than traditional suppliers of this equipment like Nokia and Ericsson and Huawei. Talk about 5G. Um, you know, I'm sure most of our viewers, a lot of investors are familiar with the 5G concept, the market. Can you, you know, explain to us the role that Airspan plays in the growing 5G um, network going forward? Uh, yeah, so first and foremost, 5G is happening now. It's the most exciting uh, cycle of innovation I've seen in my whole career. Uh, key points for your investors and our investors to understand is the fact that it's going to take a lot more cells. There's a lot more information being moved through the air in not a lot more spectrum. So imagine your highway or the, the lanes of spectrum hasn't expanded much, but you got to move 10 times as many cars through there. So that creates tremendous uh, push on the operators and the folks building those networks to do things differently. It's, it's a much more dense uh, architecture. It's not this cell phone towers along the side of the highways, it's devices in, in presence, in, in homes, in, in offices, in your, in your moving device like a plane. 
that actually become part of that network. So it's it's a densification and a pushing of processing to the edge of the network and closer to the end users. That's an essential part of 5G. We have the best pedigree to do that. We've already done that in a lot of cases in scale in, in, the, in the lead up. And, and we're in the process of doing that now in some really innovative ways. So, so it's all about more software. You have to be able to deploy these many, many more tools and, and, and base stations quickly, and you have to be able to have them configure themselves quickly. And that's a, a, a revolution in terms of how networks are built. And we've defined the terms of that revolution. We'll continue to do so uh, moving forward. And the great thing is in, in the past couple of years, the real innovators, as I mentioned before, adopted these tools and we did really well. Now they're going mainstream because as 5G comes, these are essential ingredients in how operators and private operators build out uh, to get to you, the consumers. Perfect. So in that yeah. press release on this deal announcement, one of the things that I saw was, you know, saying that Airspan is the best kept secret uh, in that industry. Can you describe what that means? Uh, yeah, so we've been uh, very, very uh, seriously building our business, our intellectual property portfolio. We made an acquisition to give us a, a really strong fixed wireless offering to compete with the likes of Cambian and Ubiquity, in addition to our mobile offerings. And we've done it uh, low profile up to this point in time. We wanted to hit the market when we actually have the real tools. I'm, I'm really proud as I look at the SPAC universe. We're, we're a real company with really fantastic growth and measurable growth and metrics of, of performance. And, and so you know, this is the unveiling uh, now as we go to much broader customer base, really increase our growth uh, to, to take the news a little bit more public. Uh, we obviously worked very closely with some real innovators to get to this point, and, and many of them like to keep tools as, as secret weapons. Uh, and so I think that's the point, you're, what, you, what you talked about as a well-kept secret. Perfect. So. I want to turn a little bit to competition. You know, I heard you talk about Ericsson and Nokia, both, you know, well-known companies, legacy suppliers. So, um, you know, how do you, uh, you know, stand against the competition and kind of differentiate a company like Airspan? We do have that slide up right now talking about some of those competitive advantages. Can you just kind of walk us through, you know, the key points there? Uh, yeah, so we, again, have a great uh, portfolio of innovation in, in what we're offering. We're the cost leader, not because we sell at lower prices, but because we design uh, very heavy grade products on very low cost silicon from partners like Qualcomm. And that allows us to have product leadership. Uh, we have absolutely award-winning uh, performance and designs. We want a Glow Mobile World at, at Mobile World Congress. That's like the Oscars of the, of the industry. We win awards continuously for our innovation. And, and actually getting things out at scale. Ease of deployment and rapid time to value is so important. A lot of the money that's spent building networks is in the operational and the logistics and, and site acquisition and tower rental. And we just turn that paradigm upside down and bring things out at one tenth of the total cost for the same amount of information being carried. That the bigger, uh, you know, the competitors like Nokia and Ericsson in my mind are like the mainframe suppliers of your who wanted to sell you a million dollar computer when you could you could do it for a lot less money. And that's really where Nokia and Ericsson sit today. Uh, they have a lot to lose is, is this uh, goes to more densification and broader numbers of cells. Their tools are, are not on the innovation curve where they need to be. Operators have to bring in that innovation. That's our opportunity. Perfect. So um, I see you know a, a huge customer base mentioned, more than a thousand customers, over a hundred countries. You know, talking about a global scare, scale that Airspan has, um, you know, how does that set Airspan up for, you know, competition and also for that future growth with that scale opportunity? Uh, yeah, so we have a, a really good base. It is global. It's not any focus on a given market. The U.S., Japan, India, very different markets, our three biggest markets. We know how to compete and operate in all of them. Uh, by going to a lot of the cost sensitive markets, we're able to develop products that really are fundamentally earth shattering in terms of economics. Uh, you know, in India, the average monthly cell phone bill is a tenth of what it is here in the U.S. And, and we're an enabler of that. We allow allow our customers to succeed there. Uh, we have about 750 people. We have ma major offices in, in 
locations like Mumbai, Tel Aviv, uh, London, Tokyo, as well as the US, but we are a US supplier. And that's important as Huawei is, is a, a name many of the viewers I'm sure are, are aware has been really banned from about a quarter of the US, I'm sorry, a quarter of the world uh, as the, the the suspicions about ownership and so forth have, have come to the front page. And that means there's a scarcity of supply. We've got that reach and, and it's really exciting right now to grow out in all these different types of markets. We've got experience in all the different types of markets developed and developing. And as I said earlier, there's so many more types of, of companies launching networks. It's, it's no longer the three main cell phone providers in a country. It's now tens, hundreds of opportunities in each country. Awesome. I want to talk a little bit about growth. So in that investor presentation, um, one of the slides, we have uh, four key points. So expansion and existing customers, customer acquisition, additional 5G use cases, and channel sales and strategic partnerships. Can you just walk us through, you know, uh, how are we going to accomplish that growth and what's the timeline to meet these four goals going forward? Uh, yeah, so we are adding new uh, new customers every day and we're selling more to our existing customers. They tend to buy one or two projects from us first and then add in something we call land and expand. Uh, so we have a very significant momentum once we get traction in a customer. Uh, we also have a growing sales channel using partners as well as selling direct. Uh, we also have many more addressable customers because of the the factors I mentioned before, the additional use cases. Also, we make products now that work in uh, lightly licensed or unlicensed spectrum, and all that's happening now. So, so we're going to see a customer roster, I think, that's two times as rich in a year's time. And we're going to have some significant new wins with major new build outs, but also growth with the current customers. Uh, it, it's all happening now. This is not a story that's two and three years out. It, it is because it's a very deep market. That's what makes it so exciting. But you know, the next 12 months are all about customer acquisition and growth. Perfect. All right. So, um, so I want to talk about quick. financials. So seeing revenue estimate of 254 million in fiscal 2021, 47% growth. Can you just talk a little bit about revenue growth going forward? Uh, yeah, so this is a, a market that's that's organically growing due to the 5G spend and then growing as the TAMs increase. The addressable market includes fixed wireless and private. Uh, you, you mentioned Kathy Woods in your last interview, talks about a, a trillion and a half dollars that's spent every year on the IT cycle. The great thing is 5G uh, touches so many parts of that. And that's a big difference between 5G and the previous generations of cellular technology. So you know, we're very optimistic. We've got a 30 something growth rate looking out over the next five years. We do have a 47 percent uh, looking at 2021. And, and again, with the momentum and the, and the rate of increase in the bookings uh, that we're experiencing right now and the growth of the markets and the additional spectrum that's hitting the market spectrum like the C block that this auction for 80 billion dollars uh, spectrum like six gigahertz, the FCC just approved. Uh, we're very confident in those numbers. All right. I want to touch on, you brought up yesterday, there was an announcement, um, Airspan and Rakuten. Can you walk us through that joint announcement and what that kind of means for um, overall growth and the partnership between the two companies? Yeah. So so Rakuten is a phenomenal, uh, it's been very phenomenal operation. They've, they've launched a network in Japan and 4G and 5G that's just unparalleled in the innovation. They're a leader in bringing in the latest and and a most intelligent ways of building. And it's at scale now. We've been uh, very much a part of that for the last 18 months and, and really, really value the relationship. Uh, we've also worked now as they take their platforms and their innovation to, to markets outside of Japan. Uh, what we announced yesterday is we are a piece of that ecosystem as well. So export the knowledge and the learning. The great thing is operators in other countries can't sit still. They can't keep market share by spending more money on advertisements on soccer teams blazers. It takes real innovation. 5G is a catalyst that's forcing it. RCP, uh, the Rakuten ex export platform is a really great vehicle uh, to help to help uh, capture some of that growth. 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here, guys. So one of the questions that I have is focused on the 5G market. You know, we've been talked, um, you know, it's been said we might get an infrastructure bill or something uh, according to that. Um, do you feel that the Biden administration will be helping the company grow? Oh, yeah, very, very much so. And we're, we're very uh, bipartisan. I visited Washington uh, 12 times in, in the months just before COVID. Uh, and, and both sides of the aisle are so deeply committed to, to getting broadband. Bro broadband is now like highways. It, it's a right. It's something that everybody needs. The industry using the old fashioned tools like Nokia and Ericsson has not done a good job of serving the rural markets at all. Uh, there was a recent analyst report that talked about 24 million homes that aren't served by, by mobile techniques and won't be. There's no magic bullet in 5G using the old fashioned uh, tools that, that the legacy equipment suppliers provide, and it's a national priority, which is really great. It's it's also uh, really important that we are a U.S. RAN company, so Radio Access Network. We are the only U.S. RAN company uh, that's scaled and, and been selling across these sectors, and, you know, that's a very important element. It's also important that as we work with our, our, our uh, government and the specific pockets of funding that are being allocated, you know, looking at 2021, there's a program called RDOF, Rural Development Opportunity Fund, uh, $9 billion of money being given out to people to build out the less dense areas, uh, operators of all walks of life. We've got a rip and replace uh, bill of, of money that's just dedicated to allowing the tier two carriers to take out Huawei, replace with, uh, you know, favorable, uh, secure, equipment. Uh, we're, we're in prime position for that. CARES Act's uh, a place where we're bringing tools to state and local uh, government. Uh, we have a partnership with Motorola Solutions where we produce the radios they sell into that sector, and then a whole lot of business around connecting students and education. Uh, so Washington is a really important part of this equation. Uh, and again, it's this additional momentum around getting everybody connected. And that's not only here in the U.S., but also in the U.K. and Japan and Germany, these initiatives are happening all over the world as governments realize they have to have a connected uh, a population to be able to thrive. And, and it, people have often said, but COVID has compressed, you know, five years of migration into, into a year. And, and we're seeing that as traffic patterns change. We all work from our homes. We all need to be connected. Nobody wants to walk to the end of the, the hill up the road to be able to talk to their boss. Uh, and this is places where the government's realizing they need to step in and be serious and the new FCC chairwoman has been very vocal about being serious about getting these gaps closed. And Airspan's front and center on that. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's it's definitely a trend that I feel, you know, it just isn't being focused on. But for a while there, it was one of the biggest focus was 5G and how it was going to come into play. Um, you guys can see here on the investor deck, uh, autonomous cars, robotics. There's going to be a bunch of different usage can you explain maybe how the EV kind of innovation and how that will come into play for your company? Uh, that'd be about the last question that I have. Okay, great. Yeah, we are very um, proud to be part of an opportunity uh, in England that was, that was funded uh, to focus on high-speed cars. We worked with McLaren, uh, who produces the Formula One cars. We built out a test track at Millbrook, and we have 4G and 5G connectivity to police, fire, first responder vehicles, cars going up to 160 miles an hour. Here in the US, we have a, a project with GoGo Networks uh, to build their air to ground for the business aviation sector that they're, they're doing so well in to bring super high speeds to planes. Airspan has intellectual property there that's unrivaled. And that's a real differentiator for us. Obviously, you can look forward and think about controlling drones. You can think about uh, military and DOD applications. And there's just an awful lot of, it's a great question because this is where 5G is really pushing the innovation curve so fast compared to just getting a faster signal to your cell phone. So great question. Yeah, we always talk about the thing behind the thing, and it seems like another one to add to the list. All right, Chris, well, we got some maybe a question from the chat or two. Yeah, I'm seeing uh, two questions here, and I think they're kind of connected. So we have Carl and Kenneth talking about satellites and space mobile um, you know, so my question, Eric, is we've heard a lot about, you know, 5G from space and satellites. Uh, will Airspan be able to play a role in that connection or would that be competitors to your offering? 
very much complementary that this distribution at the what I call the terrestrial side, which is the ground side, is is an obvious extension of satellite feed. It's something we've worked with with satellite providers for years in different remote areas. It will go more mainstream, uh, but you ultimately need a grid and an architecture you build out cost effectively. And that's a lot of terrestrial distribution using the spectrums that I mentioned before. So, so it's a complementary step. Perfect. So uh, we want to thank you so much for joining us on the show. So again, Eric Stonestrom, president and CEO of Airspan, going public with New Beginnings Acquisition Corp. That's ticker NBA. So thank you again, Eric, for taking time out of your busy schedule for joining us on the show today. Uh, thank you all very much. Have a nice thank day. Thank you. Thank you. you. Too. We'll have you back. All right. Appreciate it, Eric. All right, guys, as you guys heard it first here on the SPACs Attack, like we always do, guys, bringing you another company, getting in depth, letting you know so that you can be informed. There's too much in the SPAC world where they're just trying to run on your emotions, guys. We try to get you the information here at Benzinga. So do us a favor. If you enjoyed that interview, definitely hit the like button, smash the like up. I want to see these likes jump. I'm, I'm going to pull up to see where, where my likes are right now because y you guys got to give us some support. Give us those likes. Let's see what happens. Can we get to 800? I see 750 there. Can we break the resistance at 800? Hit me that like if you appreciate us doing this, and let's talk some specs. So what do you think about the 5G and in the industry overall, Chris? Yeah, you know, I, I think 5G, we've talked about it a lot before. You know, it's already happening. You're, you're seeing all the mobile operators already pushing. They, they need 5G to stay competitive. They need 5G in today's, you know, generation of electric vehicles and Internet of Things. I, I love your comment, of course, the thing behind the thing, which is our Benzinga phrase from our, our founder, Jason Raznick. So interesting to hear how Airspan kind of, you know, is the thing behind the thing and they complement some of those businesses, you know, in the the investments from Qualcomm, SoftBank, and Dish, you know, I think are those those partners that they have. So, you, you know, I like that. And then the, those comments from the chat, again, Carl and Kenneth, great questions. You know, I, I, I was wondering that, you know, as soon as I saw those questions, are, are, is Airspan going to be in competition with 5G from space or will they be able to, you know, get a share of that? So, I, I like his comment there too that that would be complimentary. So you know that's that's a positive in my in my eyes to hear you know that that comment back from him on that question. So thanks again to the chat. Of course, you know one of the things that we do, I think, really great. I think I honestly think we're the best in Benzinga, and we really pay attention to our our chat here. And and just to give you some example here, I caught Ziggy me telling me about the patent zone. Look look at this. I got you, man. Boom, baby. There you go. Innovation leadership with 150 patents granted and 94 patents pending. Founded in 1992, 769 employees as of uh, December 31st. So definitely keep your eye out on this one. I, I kind of like that it's a smaller company with 769 employees. I mean, you know, uh, I would consider a smaller company under a thousand employees, but it, it's going to be interesting to see how they expand. I mean, they have been founded since 1992. So that gives them uh, years of experience, years of data. So I'll keep an eye on that. Um, it, it is interesting with their kind of investments. You see a lot of uh, kind of, I mean, you're seeing banks here stand out, right? So uh, the banks always usually do their, <laughs> their due diligence. So uh, I'm going to definitely keep an eye on this one. But 5G overall, long term, I definitely think it's going to be a trend that comes back into play once we move through the pandemic and transition back to the the trends that were present prior to the pandemic, but just not focused on. Um, so we'll see what happens there. All right. So it looks like we got about 15 minutes left until power hour, guys. So let's go ahead. Let's do some ticker time. We haven't been able to do some ticker time in a while. We appreciate you guys out there. So definitely smash the subscribe bell. Let's go into ticker time. All right, all right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and 
look, take a look here at some of the tickers. Looks like we lost Chris there for a second. I don't know if it's my internet or Chris is that has been playing, but you know how it goes sometimes. Oh, looks like you came back, but in another one, I'll bring him on. My man. Yeah, I just left real quick to test it. I, I think the internet was a little buggy there, so not sure. Um, you know, if you guys in the chat were hearing me or not, but I definitely saw myself and Mitch both freeze up on my screen. So we're going to test it, see if this is any better, you know, before we get to your tickers. Of course, I want to make sure everyone can hear what I'm saying. All right, guys, let's keep rolling through here. Let's see what else we got on the list. What's on our watch list? You guys put some tickers in the chat. Let's let's start, let's start running through the ones you guys want to take a look at. Of course, of course, my man, Carl. Carl telling me I'm the man. Nah, you're the man, Carl. Let's get into, uh, he wanted to take a look at BFT here. So let's take a look at that one. I know Carl's mentioned this one before. So let's take a look. I like the weekly chart, but let's take a look at the daily and see where we're at right now. We've seen this kind of 15 and $14 hold multiple times. I talked about it when we got right back above that 15 Let's see if that 15 holds now. If that 15 holds now, I like this kind of trend that you're starting to attack. If you look here and you do Alt-T for, for our uh, Benzinga Pro users, draw that trend line. Now what do we need, guys? We need some volume, baby, volume. So that's what I'm going to be paying attention to. When can this one get some volume somewhere in here? This is kind of like now your your, your line in the sand right here near that 15 I'm going to look to see if it gets strong through 17. That's what I would like to see, guys. Some big volume flowing through 17, and, and then you would see the move there. But we'll keep an eye on this one. All right, so seeing in the chat, of course, Igor, Igor, come on, man. You don't, you don't got to put your ticker up five times, dude. I, 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 don't, I don't mind, but, I mean, I'm sure well, someone also, else minds, I don't think so. it's a, I don't think it's a SPAC either, that ticker. So. Don't worry. That's why he gets put in the corner. He gets in the timeout. Timeout, um, timeout. Timeout time, you know. That's a, the old slap on the wrist they used to say. All right, let's keep rolling through here, see what other stocks we got moving, see what we got here. Um, so I'm seeing mentioned one that I haven't talked about in a while, Ash Invest, GHVI. All right, so what's up with this one, Chris? Yeah, GHVI, I don't think we've talked a whole lot about on the show. This is Matterport. So it, it's kind of like a 3D rendering of physical locations. So, you know, they use the use case of like museums, um, houses where you can take the video with your phone, right? So you have the app, you can go to your home and you can take a 3D video and using that technology and then you post it to like your real estate listing or you can do virtual, you know, tours of museums, sports stadiums. So it's interesting, especially in the pandemic world. My, my question would be, you know, how does this play out post pandemic? Um, you know, this this is one I just I don't know the financials that well on Matterport. But, you know, you look at those volume bars there and it, it, it's interesting where, you know, it had a lot of interest. Um, you know, even after the deal was announced, this wasn't just, you know, day one. And I do remember that on CNBC, Josh Brown, who's a friend of Benzinga's, um, you know, talking about this company going forward. And he, he doesn't talk about a ton of SPACs. And this was one that he really thought stood out, GHVI with Matterport. So interesting concept there. And, you know, getting the love from Josh Brown. Yeah, guys. All right. So I'm seeing in the chat uh, being mentioned like volatility index that's not what we do here guys we're on SPACs attack i'm not even going to bring up amc don't even get me started but let's continue rolling through here guys i'm seeing mention of one that i am keeping an eye on brad moore talking about nga here let's get into nga see what we see here um i i liked it when it bounced but let's take a look here as it's pulling back now closer towards this 18 I'll, I'll be looking to see if it can get below 18. Then I can look for maybe a risk towards 16. I do like this one long term. The biggest thing I think with NGA is going to be, to me, is government support. Because I've seen a lot of their buses, and I think that's a very great product. But the, the key is, I think they need some support. You know, I need they need some backing, some government backing, maybe a, a bill or something that can really push them forward to the next level. But 
right now I'm, I'm I am getting interested a little bit in this chart. What do you think about this one, Chris? Yeah, and Mitch, so on that point with government support, so NGA, Lion Electric, this is a Canadian company. We had them on the show. They do have the support in Canada. Um, you know, mm, Justin Trudeau good, good has, has toured. They just announced that new battery uh, manufacturing plant, and they do have some deals in place there. So, but they, as Mitch said, you know, it would be nice to see them get more deals here in the U.S. They are working on adding a facility here in the U.S., and I announcement will be a catalyst going forward. I do own shares of NGA. This is a long-term hold for me, electric buses, electric vans. And, you know, I think that there will be more to the story coming when they start to announce some of these facilities, plants, and deals in the U.S. expanding past Canadian market. Hey, it looks like uh, somebody was able to grab NGA near that 10. Hey, JC, power to you. I, I, If you want to slide it to my account, I won't be mad at you. But if you keep it in yours, I won't be mad at you either. So, hey, can't blame you for that one. Let's keep rolling through here. What else we got moving? Hey, Rick House, bringing up one that we talked about multiple times. But, hey, I can't blame him. We, we've even we, we've talked about this one multiple times. But APA, APPH, this is going to be interesting. It keeps bouncing off that 20. I think that $20 is kind of like a line in the sand now. If you look at the chart, that $20 just sticks out to me. As long as it can hold 20 now, I'd be interested in it. It went from, let's say, about 17 up to 25. Now it's pulled back. It, it has, it's looking like a nice day today at least, but I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on this one. One of the things that I did see is on this big down the big down bar you got a huge amount of volume 10 million shares traded i'm sure that was people getting out but one of the things that you did see is that it bounced off this prior resistance that was between december 11th to the january 7th time and that's where it caught that support right there at 1750 area and now we're back up to 25 we've pulled back i want to see that 20 hold and if that 20 can hold, it looks like it could probably push back towards that 25. Yeah, right, that, that, go that ahead. drop, you remember, that was when they issued that filing that they were going to offer more shares. And that was actually the day mm. that President David Lee was on our show. And everyone in the chat, of course, wanted us to ask, hey, how come your share is tanking today? Um, but remember... It was about that share offering. And now look at the recovery that it's starting to make. You know, this one's getting a lot of attention. It's a sustainability, smart growing company going forward. You heard us on the show talk about how there, there's more to the company than just tomatoes. I know people in the chat were even talking, you know, cannabis in the future. There's a lot they can do with that technology with the indoor uh, growing. So th this is a long-term play, I think, in my opinion. And if you are lucky enough to, you know, buy in on that dip i think you got a good position uh post the all right all right guys so let's go ahead and continue rolling through here see what other other stock i'm seeing mentioned john doe with the most original name you know eight zon here eight zon let's get into it this is one that's on my radar chris i don't know about if it's on for you but once it dropped through 11 i talked about that level I said if it drops through that level, I definitely will keep an eye on this one. And one of the things that I've been mentioning to Chris is that this could be a time when we really start paying attention to uh, SPACs that actually have the acquisition, the definitive agreement, because what that can do for us is that we can at least start looking at evaluations. And I think for a second here, you know, growth is not the forefront and value is actually becoming more of a forefront. And so when, when value becomes into play, the fundamentals actually matter, guys. But when we're focused strictly on growth, it's just like when you're growing a company. You're just focusing on keep going up, keep going up. And, and, and that's kind of what I'm seeing now. So let's look at some maybe value plays. Let's take a, an assessment. Look for some. See if some that you like. And some that are on my radar, HZON. Uh, I mentioned another one that's on my radar, of course, that Spitfire acquisition. I, I, I kind of like this one. Um, I'm going to pull you down, John Doe. No offense to you, but just SPFR here. Looking interesting down below 1034. Um, I thought this one was going to get above 11 and never come back. So the, the attempt to hold these 1020s is going to be important. But it gives you at least an ability to go off of it. And maybe this is a value. In long term, it comes it comes up. 
Looks like we got to smash the like from Freddy. So definitely do us a favor. Thumbs up, baby. Yeah, Mitch, you know, uh, interesting you say H-Z-O-N is on your radar because what's the rumor out there, of course? Sport radar. So, you know, that, that's that been a rumor out there for a little while now. They haven't announced a deal. I did actually see um, comments out there from, I think, uh, Sportico, which originally reported the, the rumor, saying that there was an issue now with funding, right? Because this is a large deal, and they're going to have to secure additional money for that pipe. The concern I'd have with HZON, too, is it's a smaller SPAC. So as we saw yesterday with that eToro deal where shareholders are only getting 2.4% of the company going forward, I, I think that would be similar with HZON and that $10 billion valuation for Sport Radar for me to get excited about that. I would have to hear more about that NFL exclusive deal that's up for renewal this year. If they can't you know, say, yes, we renewed it or yes, it's exclusive. I don't know if that 10 billion is really, you know, needed there. And to me, I'd look at Genius Sports DMYD instead. DMYD, they have an exclusive deal with the NCAA, right? So we have March Madness or March Spackness going on right now. And then also they have a lot more soccer deals, which we know how big of soccer bets are in international territory. So to me, when that Sport Radar deal is announced, we're going we're to take a look and compare, you know, Genius to Sport Radar, but... I, you know, I want to see the valuation and I want to hear more about that NFL deal uh, to get excited, you know, to push HCON over 11 here. All right, Chris. So I'm going to go a little ballsy here, guys, and and make a call here. I, I, I'm sure I'm going to hear about it on Twitter, guys. So definitely let me know what you guys think in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter, Story Investors, C-L-O-V. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. I'm starting to look at it. I almost got in yesterday. I, I think it's 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 time. It's time to start looking at this one. You know, we're starting to get some bottoming action. We got that bottoming action near that seven dollars. And now one of the things that I'm starting to see is a couple of days sideways, right? Um, and, and the real interesting fact for for me in this one is that it's below all this pricing, all the ten dollar pricing. And so, yeah, we don't have that floor anymore. But what does it gives me? It gives me an opportunity that I have a feeling there's a couple people that are still stuck somewhere in between that ten to eleven dollars or up there towards the twelve. And so that gives me the idea that maybe this this could create a resistance there, make a drive up towards that twelve dollar level. Then it, it could pull back, you know, maybe come back to closer towards that 10 before it comes back to 12. But hey, if I can go ahead and and, and, and how you guys know my, my trades are always based off of uh, kind of my risk assessment here. And so alt T, this is what I'm seeing, guys. So if I draw kind of this trend line here, we've been downtrending straight down almost right? But that bottoming action is what starts getting me interested. Now, the real key is, do we retrace to this level closer towards eight or do we just start pushing through the to get to the 10? So I'm going to be watching this one right now. It did seem interesting. Uh, I, I couldn't watch it today because I was a little bit busy, guys, but I was looking to get near 850s. And today the low is 836. So it wouldn't have been a bad position, at least for me in my eyes, if I would have took it today. I've been feeling good because you now you have two bottom supports that you can go off of. You could say that the low of today, the low of yesterday, 825, the low of March 12, 822. So something to go off of, something to, to measure the risk. And now I think if it gets some volume through nine, tens, it, it could push right back on up. And I know there's a lot of people in this one. So uh, it's definitely gotten on my radar and I've become a bull. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to change my story here. And I think it starts moving. What do you think? There's a lot of people out there and you know, you're, you, you think you're going to get some hate on Twitter for as much as you think you're going to get some hate, you're going to get some love too. Cause this is, this is a battleground stock. You, you got 50, 50. The, the thing I don't like is there were a lot of people pushing this one, you know, from 10 to 14, so, you know, you talked about some people maybe being out there still caught in that 10 to 10 to 12 range. I think you got a lot of people caught out there in the, the $14 range, too. Mm. Um, but I do like the entry here, you know, the level you talked about. I, I know we've talked about this one under 10 before. You know, I, I think, you know, we just need to hear more from them. Their earnings report wasn't that exciting. So the chart looks good. 
but but from the story side of things, I think we need to hear more partnerships from them. It's just not as exciting as it was when they announced. But you know, it is trending to to look positive. You know, as you said, and and uh, for for those of you watching who don't know about this chart out there and, and Alt T, uh, you know, Mitch, what software are we using out there? What's this Benzinga Pro all about? You already know, guys. I mean, hey. One thing I definitely do like to do, guys, is use my Benzinga Pro, guys. And why do I use it? Because, hey, it makes my life easy. It was one thing I've always said about Benzinga Pro is that the user, it's just easy to work with. And there's too many programs in the financial world that you feel like you need to go and get a degree just to, just to run. Um, I don't even want to talk about a Bloomberg terminal. But one of the things is, can, can you get things nice and easy? So to, to me, I have SPACs attack watch list. Yeah, I have some some penny watch list, some esports watch list, even a Chamath watch list <laughs> where I just put uh, stocks that he's he's involved with. And, and, and this is the fun part, guys. There's, there's lots of different things that you can be doing. And one of the things that I like is just using the movers tools, the news feed, and, and getting everything just easy for me right there and there. I love the charting. Um, and, and you guys see us use it every day. Um, you know, you, you can get into fundamentals, the financials, the peers. Um, one of the things that I always look at is when I when I start looking through a stock is that I want to see the, the news quickly. And so let's say like uh, a stock like um, what, what did a big move today? Um, we could say ride. Uh, Trying to find some news here, some breaking news here for us. <laughs> Ride on Express? No, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> All right, so you see right here, guys. So the why is it moving section. This is my favorite section, guys. If you want life to be easy for you, this was made for that intention, guys. So when you see a stock moving big, a lot of the times we're going to have a why it's is moving section. And this section tells you exactly kind of what's going on here. So, you know, quarter four ESPS results down from last year. It was on CNBC. So that's how it rolls, guys, and, and that's how it happens. So we got Power Hour next, guys. Um, one more that I, I did want to mention, um, and, and that's new – I think it was media, New Media Solutions. Was was that one of our uh, – on our SPAC, SPACness? I saw it moving up, Chris. I, wanna... I, I think so. That sounds familiar. New Media, yeah, I think that's a completed deal. Um can't even find it now yeah i'm trying to find the ticker uh, so guys, i know you had it wanna, yesterday i just want to hit on benzinga pro too you heard mitch you know talk all about the positives if, if you're not using it you get a free two-week trial the link is below in the description to the video so if you want to test it out you're not sure if you're going to like it sign up below give it a shot I, you know i think you're going to like it mitch and i use it all the time we love it and then you know we've got power hour coming up next we've got some great guests we also have that Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful, Raz Report at 2 o'clock. We've got crypto today. We've got cannabis hour today. We've got an exciting lineup of content all day long. Don't go anywhere. Smash the like. Hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the Benzinga YouTube channel. And, you know, we'll catch you uh, tomorrow for Spax Attack. All right, guys. So I just wanted to mention, I got it. I got it here. It's there it DMS. is. DMS, guys. I don't fail for you guys. I tried to get it up there. Boom. Look at that. Look at that move. move Look at that move, man. That Hey, that's that, this is probably another one into that programmatic section where you see MGNI, uh, Pub, Pub M talked about. I know Jason talked about MGNI on, on pre-market prep on Friday. So that one's been doing great. I see Hot Stocks Luke. He looks like he's getting ready. Energy drinks is up in the air. You already know. Ba, 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 ba. I, I need my own little soundboard here. You, you need know. that soundboard. We're, 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 we're going to be double fisting today, drinks. man. Double Holy fisting. Cow. Double Holy fisting cow. Luke here. What's up, Luke? How are we doing? Doing hey, good. Can you guys hear me? Yes. You might turn into that lightning bolt that I see behind you, man. Boom. It's coming right out of your head right now, lightning. We got exactly. that energy That's from the drinks flowing in. That's hey, what we're well, going for, man. I'm feeling like a little goofy today. We're going to do some live trades today. Do you it. Know, we're going to get flying. All hey, right. I love to hear it. Love to hear it. Bring us into Power Hour, the best show in the afternoon.
where you can get your stocks, actual trades, real trades made happen every single day. So if you want to see and stick with Hot Stocks Luke's win or lose, you guys can watch them here, guys, on the Power Hour. I will get on out of here. Let's and, go. And we'll see you next time, guys, on SPACs Attack.